Good day, folks. Today in this video, I'm going to go over all the steps needed to get you up and running and shooting with your GoPro Hero 6. I know there's going to be a lot of people getting their very first GoPro over the holiday season, and in this video, I'm going to go over all the steps needed to get you up and running and shooting with your camera quickly and easily. So to get started, we're just going to go over the camera and the contents of the box and how to unpackage it. Now, keep in mind, I've already had mine out. Uh, these uh, Heroes have been out for a few months, so... I've just put mine back in the box so I can walk through it with you step by step. So basically there's a tab at the bottom, you're just going to rip it off and open up the flap. Inside this main box there's a little white box and you're just going to pull it out. And as you can see as you're pulling it out, the whole camera is going to come right out. Just like so. So now we're going to detach the camera from this box. And basically on the back here, this is a buckle mount. And now your camera is going to have an extra little plastic piece in here. So you're going to have to go ahead and remove that first. That's just put in there for shipping purposes. So you can take that little black clip off and throw it away. Now to remove the camera, we're going to lift this little rubber flap up. We're going to squeeze in on the fingers. And we're just going to slowly push forward. And it will come right off. Just like so. So we'll just set the camera down here for a minute and we'll go through the rest of the box and just open it up and inside you're going to have some instructions you're going to have a warranty information gopro care all that kind of stuff uh, some stickers and if you open up this flap here you're going to have a few little goodies inside you're going to have a usb-c cable and this is for charging and data transfer you're going to have two mounts uh, one is for curved surfaces and one is for flat surfaces. It's nice that GoPro includes these, but uh, there's much better equipment that uh, I do recommend that you get. And I'll go over that at the end of the video. Some essential hardware that you should have for your GoPro. So we'll just set all that aside for now. The other thing you're going to have inside is the battery. This is the battery for the GoPro. So let's talk about the camera and the hardware that's attached to it right now. Let's go ahead and take off the buckle mount. So we're going to turn the thumb screw to remove it. We'll set the camera down. Now this is what's called a buckle mount and this attaches to many different uh, accessories in the GoPro universe. Here's an example of what the buckle mount would connect to. The buckle mount just clamps inside that little slot there and then you would mount the GoPro on top. Now not all GoPro accessories use the buckle system. Now this is the GoPro Shorty and as you can see it already has a mount built into it. So those are the two basic types of mounts that uh, you'll be using for your GoPro. So the GoPro itself right now is in a frame and that is for the most part how you're going to mount it. So we're going to remove the GoPro from the frame. So we're going to pull from the top here. You got to use a fair amount of force and it just snaps back like that. We can open it up and again you have to sometimes do a little bit of wiggling but it'll come right out just like so. And there is the naked GoPro. Now this GoPro is waterproof all by itself, so you can take this in the water with no issues. So it's perfect for beach days, surfing, kayaking, anywhere you're going to be in and around water. Now before we can continue, we need to install the battery and the memory card. Now there's very specific memory that a GoPro Hero 5 or 6 needs, and I'll include some links down in the description so you can check them out further. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom of the camera and this is the battery and memory card compartment. So we're going to press on the little button and then just slide to the side and it'll pop right open. So that is the slot for the memory card and when you insert the memory card you're going to have the little metal strips facing the front of the camera and you're just going to insert it in the little slot and then press it down in until it clicks. Now we'll put the battery in and the logo faces the front of the camera and it just goes in like so until it clips in. We can now shut the door. Now at this point I always recommend to double check the door to make sure it's closed tightly. There's no gaps because the camera is waterproof but if you uh, don't close the door properly and you put this in water it can severely damage your camera. Now for the next step we need to charge the camera. There'll be a little bit of power that came on the battery but it's a good idea at this point before you continue to fully charge your camera. Now we're going to do so by using the included USB-C cable. Now the GoPro does not ship with a wall charger, but you can use ones from your iPhone or your iPad, or even plug this directly into a USB port on a computer. So we're going to plug the larger end into a computer USB port or into a wall adapter. And at the side here we have another door, and again we just press the button and open it up. 
And inside there we have a USB-C port and an HDMI port. We're going to plug the USB-C end into the GoPro. And it doesn't matter which way you plug it in. Uh, the nice thing about USB-C is that they are reversible and you can plug it in either way. And you'll know it's charging because the red light will come on. There's also one at the bottom and one at the back there. It'll stay illuminated red until the camera's fully charged and then they'll go out and you know the camera's ready to use. So now we're going to get ready to power our camera on for the first time. Now when we power on our camera for the first time it's going to ask us a few basic questions. It's also going to ask us to set up quick stories. If you're not sure what quick stories is, basically it's a way for your GoPro to communicate with the GoPro app on your smartphone and transfer data that it can automatically make nice little edits for you. So if you've been at the beach for the day and you come home between the camera and the smartphone app, it'll automatically make a nice edit all put to music, nicely edited, that you can share instantly. So it's a really good thing to set up, especially if you're new to the GoPro world. The other thing it does, it allows you to control your camera change settings and it also is a way to easily update the firmware. Now the firmware is very important to update and if you have a brand new GoPro there are going to be some updates available. Now basically the firmware is software that runs on the camera that controls the functionality, how it performs and it adds features so it's very important to update it. So we're going to power on our camera for the first time so at the side here we're going to notice a mode and power button. We're just going to press that so the camera is going to come on and ask us a few basic settings. Right now it's asking us what language and I'm going to select English. From here it's going to ask us to agree. It's going to ask us to turn on GPS and that's pretty handy to turn on because it can store your location where you took photos. It also adds telemetry data to your videos, different things like how the speed you're going, the altitude, the distance, some interesting things that can be added. Now at this stage it's just going to give you a little bit of a tour and you can progress from one screen to the next just by tapping on it. You can read what it's showing you. So now we're at the stage where it's going to ask us to set up quick stories. So I would go ahead and do this. If you've already powered on your camera and skipped this step, it's easily done via the GoPro app. So we'll get our smartphone out and ready and uh, have the GoPro app running. We will hit ready. Now on the back of the camera, it's going to display the camera name and the password. Every GoPro has unique credentials for logging in. So on the GoPro app, we're going to add device. And it's going to say connect to your Hero 6 Black. We're going to hit continue. It's going to ask us if we want to pair our, the GoPro to Bluetooth. Now we have to join the network. Your Hero 6 broadcasts its own Wi-Fi network, and that's how the two communicate. So we'll hit join. Gives us a thumbs up that we've connected. And there we go. So now we can get a preview of what the camera sees. Now at this stage, if your camera is brand new, it's going to pop up saying there's a firmware update. Definitely go ahead and download that. It's very important to keep your camera running smooth and to add new features. Now I'm not going to go over all the details what you can do with the GoPro app. I'll be making a separate video for that. But basically you can stop and start recording. Use it like a remote. You can also change all the different settings that are available within the GoPro. So we've connected our smartphone and our camera is ready to go. Now there's one step that I usually recommend doing. Now this is not a necessity, but it's a thing that I personally do and I think it's important. Chances are you've put a brand new memory card in there or a memory card from another camera. It's a good idea to format it. Now formatting will erase everything on the card, so it's important to not have anything important on it. It basically just sets up the file structure, makes sure all the data tables are in good healthy order, and that prevents corruption down the road on your media files to the option where it says format SD card. So we're just going to click on it. It's going to ask us to cancel or delete, so we'll hit delete. And the reason it says delete is this is a good way to clear all the pictures and different things off your memory card as well. So we'll hit delete. So we're at the main screen. I'm going to give you kind of an overview and then we'll go through some of the settings. I'm going to keep things very basic for this video and in upcoming videos I'll go into more advanced settings and techniques. So basically on your main screen here it's going to give us a bit of information. Now this little icon down here, the little video camera, signifies that we are in video mode. So if we hit the record button, it's going to start recording video. This gives us our resolution. And you've probably heard the terms 1080 HD, 4K, 2.7K. That's basically the video size, the resolution of the video. By default, it's in 1080, and we can change that by clicking on it. And we can select 4K, 2.7K, and some various other ones. But for the sake of this video, we're going to leave it in 1080. And if you're new to GoPro, I would actually recommend leaving it at 1080. 
1080 is a very common format and it can be edited easily. If you shoot in 4K, 4K is really nice, but some computers can't handle that for editing. The next is the frames per second. Frames per second is basically just like it sounds, it's how many frames per second it shoots. And again, we can click on it to, to change it. Again, for this video, we're just gonna keep it basic. In future videos, we'll talk about some of the other frame rates and how to achieve slow motion. Two of the most common frame rates that I shoot with are 30 and 60. Most of the time, I always leave it on 60. The reason I shoot at 60 frames per second is it does allow me to slow the footage down by half if I need to. So the next setting here is field of view. So if we click on it, you'll see that we have three settings. We have linear, wide, and super view. Wide is the most common that people use with GoPros. And the reason they use it is the GoPro has a nice wide lens and it allows you to fit more of the environment in the view. The only problem with wide is that you can see there on the preview on my desk that there's a bit of a curve. That's kind of the downside to wide view and super view is it does distort the image. You can get a lot of data in there but it does cause some distortion. Linear is a nice choice for many people because they don't like that distorted look. So you just have to decide whether you want a nice clean straight image or you want more data. The other thing you can do in this menu is zoom. And this is new for the Hero 6. So as you can see, if you need to get closer to the action or what you're filming, you can uh, set the zoom. Now to exit this menu, we just slide down from the top. So the little antenna icon at the top here with the little lines around it means that we have connections enabled. And that just means that we're able to do connections to say like smart remotes, different things like that, the GoPro app. And right beside that, you can barely see it. There's a little GPS icon. And when you're outside and the camera connects to the satellites for GPS information, that'll light up. And that way you know that it's tracking GPS. At the top here, it tells us how much space is remaining on the memory card. And because I'm in video mode, it's telling me I can record for two hours and 33 minutes with the space remaining on the card. If we switch to photo mode, it'll give you a number of how many photographs you can take. On the left hand side here is how we access the media that we've shot on our GoPro. So if we swipe over, it'll load all the media that we've previously shot. We can scroll through it. We can delete media and we can view it. To go back to our main media view, we just click on the little icon at the top there, and that'll take us back to the grid view. To exit the media viewer, we just swipe down from the top. We can swipe over, and this gives us more advanced settings, like ProTune, and I'm not gonna go into ProTune. ProTune allows you to adjust very advanced settings like ISO and different things like that. For this tutorial, we're gonna keep things very basic, so we're just gonna skip that. The next one over is video stabilization and by default it is enabled. That helps keep your footage smooth and the Hero 6 has some amazing stabilization on it compared to the Hero 5. So that's a basic walkthrough of the interface. So now let's go over the different shooting modes that the Hero 6 is capable of. So like I stated earlier, this means we're in video mode, but if we click on it, it's gonna bring all our different modes up. At the top, we have a video camera for video mode, we have a camera for photo mode, and we have this little circle icon up here that means time lapse. And every one we click on gives us a submenu. So video gives us video and looping, and looping we'll cover in a different video. Photo mode gives us regular photo, night photo, and burst. Bursts are nice when you want to take a nice high action shot. It will shoot off a whole bunch of photos in like a second and uh, allow you to capture the shot you want. Night mode is for shooting at night, and the GoPro can actually take some beautiful photos at night. And the next mode are your time lapses. So you can do a time lapse video, a time lapse photo, and a night lapse photo. And again, we'll save that for another video. So we'll start with recording video. And we know we're in video mode because we have the picture of the video camera in the bottom left hand corner. So to record a video, we're just gonna hit the record button at the top. When we're done, we just hit the button again. We've taken a video, but now we want to take some photos. We're gonna hit the little mode button at the bottom and we're gonna go over to photograph and uh, we're gonna choose normal photo. And it's the exact same way. We just hit the button and it'll take a picture. So yeah, that is the most common way to capture your media. Now there's a few other ways and I'm gonna show you that now. So GoPro has a feature called Quick Capture. And what that does is allows you to take a video without having to power on the camera first. And the reason why that might be beneficial is if something interesting is happening around you and you don't want to have to go through all the time of turning on the camera, setting the modes, you can just hit the record button while the camera's powered off. The camera will power on and start recording. When you're done, 
you hit the record button again and it'll just shut off. So that's really handy, but the only problem with it is it doesn't allow you to change settings. So it's only going to start recording at your last used settings. So we've just gone over the basic way of shooting videos and taking photos. Now I'll show you another way, and that's using your voice. Using your voice to control your GoPro was introduced with the Hero 5, and it works with the Hero 6 as well. Now before we can do that, we have to enable it, and by default it's disabled. So to enable voice commands, we're going to swipe down from the top, and the little picture of the head there, we're going to click on it. And we're going to turn it on. It's going to ask us what language. Make sure we have it set to English. If you use another language, set it to the appropriate language. Hit yes. It'll only ask you those questions once. From this point, we can turn it on and off just by pressing it. And there are those situations where you do want it off because if you're in a busy place, sometimes the GoPro will pick other people's voices up and uh, that can be less than ideal. So now that we've got voice commands enabled, we can simply say, GoPro, record video. And there you go. And to turn it off, GoPro, stop recording. And we can do this to shoot photographs as well. Now the nice thing about voice commands is you don't have to be in the specific mode. As you can see here, I'm in the video mode still, but I can say, GoPro, take a photo. You can see it took a photo and it switched just automatically to photo mode. And you can use your voice to change from mode to mode. GoPro, photo mode. GoPro, time lapse mode. GoPro video mode. So that's kind of handy and it saves a few steps. You can also use your voice to power off your camera. GoPro turn off. Now you can also use your voice to power the camera on as long as it's been turned on in the last eight hours. But that has to be enabled as it's disabled by default. So to turn that on we're going to swipe down from the top. We're going to go to preferences. And we're going to scroll down until we see the option wake on voice. So we're going to turn that on. So now we'll do a quick test. GoPro, turn on. And you can see it comes right on there. The voice commands are great and they come in really handy in certain situations. For example, if you've got this on an extension pole and you're taking a selfie and the record button's out of reach, you can just tell it to take a photo and there you go. So when you're all done to power off your GoPro, we're just going to do a long press on the power mode button. and the camera will turn off. So those are all the basic functions of the GoPro to get you up and running quickly. Now I'd like to go over a few accessories with you. So we're gonna put the camera back in the frame. Most of the time when you mount your camera or use it with different accessories, it's gonna be inside the frame. So the first accessory that I wanna show you is the GoPro Shorty. I would have to say this is the most important thing you can get for your GoPro. When I first got it, I was a little apprehensive, but uh, it has quickly become my most used accessory. I always have this with me. I never leave home without it when I'm out filming with my GoPro. So basically it is a handle, it is a mini extension pole, and it is a tripod. So when attached to the GoPro, it acts as a nice handle. It's very important to have a handle. It's one of your most basic ways to film. You then also have the extension feature, which is great if you're taking selfies or doing any kind of vlogging. And the little tripod makes it easy to film yourself doing various tasks. Now, depending on why and how you're gonna be using your GoPro, if I had to recommend one accessory to get for your GoPro, this would have to be it. Now, the next accessory I would recommend to get is a charger for your GoPro batteries. This is the dual charger from GoPro. And when you purchase it, it comes with a spare battery, which is very important. You can never have too many batteries for your GoPro. This allows you to charge two batteries at once very quickly, and it allows you to use your camera while you're charging. Next accessory I recommend to get is some form of extension pole. This is the GoPro El Grande, and it's a great way to get shots of yourself while doing various tasks. You can use it just like this to give you a nice reach, or it extends to 38 inches. Now with this accessory, you have to use the buckle mount that came with the GoPro. Now the next accessory I recommend is a power bank. This is the RAV Power 10,000 milliamp power bank and with this you can charge your GoPro about nine times. It has two USB ports on it so you can charge your GoPro and another device quickly and easily. This is great for charging your GoPro when you're not around traditional power. Great for campers and hikers. So yeah, a few basic accessories to help get you going and shooting some cool footage. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it helped you a little bit if you're brand new to the GoPro world.
We release videos on a regular basis featuring new hardware, tutorials, and different techniques to get the most out of your GoPro. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, and we'll see you in the next one.